Next up, let's talk about Australia. Now, Australia is a team that was kind of struggling a little bit, kind of struggling a little bit. This is a team that, um, you know, we were expecting to make it out of um, out of the, um, the, the group playing and on to the quarterfinals, but they did end up, again, getting that upset against um, Nigeria, and there were question marks about, okay, well, can this team actually make it to the quarterfinals? This is a squad that um, they needed to win today. Team Australia needed to win against France today uh, because before today's game, they were one of one. Uh, they were losing in terms of point and differential. And so it was like the only way Australia could secure their entrance into the uh, quarterfinals was to win today. They had to win. That was their mandate. You need to win because you didn't need to have it. You didn't need to have discussions about, oh, does does Australia have the point differential to actually make uh, make it um, to to the quarterfinals? Because in reality, if if they lost today, they wouldn't have had the the point differential. They wouldn't have made it to the quarterfinal. All right, um, they wouldn't have made it. And so that that's the that's the that's the thing. They had to win today against Australia. And they did just that, guys. Uh, this team, this team in Australia, they were able to make it happen and get the dub over um, France. And, guys, hand France their only loss of um, the Olympics so far. This was a fun game, guys. And this was actually a game that I actually thought that um, I thought that they were going to lose. <laughs> I, th- I, th- I, thought, I thought Team Australia was about to lose. Because it felt like, yeah, sure, Australia um, sort of had the, had, uh, the lead, you know. Um, uh, they, they, were, they, were, they had the lead at the end of the first quarter. Um, you know, I believe it was tied up, I think, at, the, at halftime. Um, and whatever Sandy Brondello told them, whatever she told them at the, um, at the halftime break, that really helped them out th- throughout the rest of the game. Because, guys... When I tell you, the bench players stepped up big time for Team Australia. Stepped up huge. I thought Kayla George in the minutes that she played, I thought she was huge. Hitting um she hit she hit one of the one three pointer. I believe that was in the in the fourth quarter. She hit a big three pointer. Um I thought that that like again kept um kept Australia in this game. Um when we look at uh Tess Mat um Madgen. Um, I thought she played fantastic in this game. She had 18 points against France today. Off the bench, guys. Um, you know, Lauren Jackson, she didn't play in this game um, because, you know, it was, it was a very, very, very close one. Very, very, very close game. Um, but, guys, as we have seen time and time and time again in this tournament, Sammy Wickham has come to the rescue. Um, once again, she continues – to uh to just help this team get scores, help this team make some stuff happen. Um, so so yeah, I mean, I don't know, guys. Uh, th- this is a this is a squad that was struggling. They were, uh, they had to win today. This was this was their time, and players stepped up, bench players stepped up, starters stepped up, and ultimately, Team Australia does wind up making it to the next round. And, guys, they were playing in front of hostile territory. Hostile. Hostile territory. When I tell you, when I tell you the amount of fans that were there, it was wild, guys. They made history. Got a slide to show it. Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? There was a record that was set today for attendance. Uh, this is a record attendance for women's basketball in Europe of 27,193 fans. Came out to Lyle, France to uh, watch Australia take on the French national team. Guys, that's history. All right? Record attendance was set today um, watching a women's basketball game. And, guys, we talk about women's basketball uh, we talk about women's basketball, and we talk about the growth of, of the game. We talk about the growth of the game, and, and it's fun to see. It, it, it really is fun to see. Really fun. 
Um, and so shout out to shout out to uh, you know this record being being hit. You know, unfortunately, uh, all the all the French fans that came out to cheer on their squad. Unfortunately, France didn't win, but uh, it was a fun game to watch. It, it sure it sure was a fun game to watch. That's for sure. And once again, we see bench players step up and get the dub. Um, so fun game. Um, and yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, Alyssa says people on IG are saying that France lost on purpose so they wouldn't see Team USA next. Um, people say anything on social media. People, people, people be saying anything on social media. I, I don't know about that. I I'm not sure about that. I don't. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think that's. Uh, I don't think they lost because of that. I think they lost because they just weren't good enough to beat um, Australia. I think Australia wanted it a lot more. I think that's why they lost. Um, I, I don't think they um, intentionally tried to lose. All right, <laughs> Zola says, "Yeah, if Liz was on this was in this Australian lineup, probably win uh, going to win go no." If Liz Cambage was um was 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 there for Australia, um, they wouldn't win gold. They wouldn't win gold. Um, cause they still ha- they'd have to go through uh, Team USA, and that wasn't gonna happen. <laughs> that wasn't, in my opinion, that wasn't gonna happen. Um, and there's some shouts outs to Sandy Brondello. Yeah, yeah. I I, I think I think Sandy Brondello coached a really good game. Um, that game against um the game against Nigeria. I was like, this is very suspect, Sandy. You got to get it together, Sandy. Come on now. Um, and she got it together and, and got a huge win against um, France. Uh, Kimmy says, uh, Quita, I went to watch U.S. versus Germany showcase in London. It was a great game. I sat next to another awesome people, other person on the internet. Oh, that's awesome. I also shook hands with Asia and Sabrina. Wow. Kimmy, shout out to you. That is awesome. That is absolutely awesome. Uh, William is asking, Quita, what's the story on Liz Cambage? Actually, I made a video about Liz Cambage a long time ago. Um, I am just going to reference you to that um, because I'm going to derail the, 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 the show talking about Liz Cambage. Um, so, yeah, I did, make a, I did make a video about Liz Cambage. Um, actually, I made, I made several videos about Liz Cambage. Uh, so I'm going to drop some of the links in the chat real quick. I'm going to drop some of the links in the chat and you all can take a look at that at your own leisure. Um, but I, I am not going to, I'm not going to go into Liz Cambage. It's way, it's way too much to talk about. It's a, it's a whole spectacle. Here's, here's some of the links to my old videos talking about, uh, Liz Cambage. Y'all can watch those. Um, but yeah, we 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 can't we can't derail and talk about Liz because that's a whole. We could talk about Liz Cambage and everything that's happened for about an hour. We we can we can talk talk about that for about an hour. So so yeah. Uh, sorry, William, but uh, but yeah, why why? I mean, I made videos about it talking talking about it. So so go go and watch those. Um, go go and watch those videos. I made four videos in the past all about Liz Cambage. All right, so watch 